Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Acre Homestead and my kitchen. I'm gonna pour myself a cup of tea. I woke up this morning to snow, which is crazy. We typically don't get snow around here until late January, early February, and to have snow in early November is crazy. <laughs> so what I thought we would do today is make some new recipes. On snowy days, I love to do a little bit of experimenting and baking in the kitchen. So that's what we're gonna do today. My friend Chelsea over at Little Mountain Ranch, she made this Nutella swirl bread and then she made it again the other day and she did instead of Nutella because I don't have that. Cinnamon sugar swirl bread and I have all the ingredients for that and I felt inspired that we're gonna go ahead and make that along with some creamy broccoli cheddar soup. So we're gonna get started on that first thing is the bread because we need that to rise. So this recipe calls to make it in a mixer, but because it's a snowy, slow day, I'm gonna do this by hand, but you could do this in a hand mixer. I'm gonna start with one cup of warm water, and that's nice and warm. And then to that, we are gonna add one teaspoon of yeast, a tablespoon of sugar. We're gonna mix this together, and we're gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. While our yeast is starting to proof, I'm gonna go ahead and put the proof mode on my oven so we can warm up or let our bread rise in the oven because my house is a little chilly this morning. Then I'm gonna soften a little bit of butter. Because I don't have Nutella, we're gonna make this into a cinnamon bread. So I'm gonna take, I don't know, maybe, what is that? Two thirds of a cup of butter and we're gonna just lightly melt this. I have found that when I make cinnamon rolls, I don't like the butter to be completely melted because then it makes it hard to roll. So I'm just going to maybe have this go for 20 seconds so that it's a little bit soft, maybe half melted, and then the rest of it still is gonna have some firmness to it. There we go, that's perfect. So you can see how it's kind of melted, but it's gonna be really soft and we're gonna be able to, you know what, maybe I'm gonna do it for another five seconds. There, that's perfect. Nice and soft, perfect. I'm having Friendsgiving at my house this weekend and this morning was a really slow, quiet morning and I just sat at my desk and I worked on finding recipes for Friendsgiving and I'm really just so excited to have some friends in from out of town and to be able to make them an incredible meal. Just getting out a couple more of the ingredients we need for our bread. We need some brown sugar and cinnamon. And then this yeast is, at, this is actually active dry yeast. And so it technically doesn't need to proof, but I've had problems with it in the past. So I wanna just make sure it is alive. And I've got other yeast I can use if I need to. When I make my no need bread recipe, I use this yeast and it has no problems. But when I made rolls last time, I don't know if you remember last time we tried to make my one hour rolls, it didn't work. So. I want to get out my other yeast if I can find it and kind of do a test comparison. So I just found my other yeast. I'm going to get another bowl out and we're going to do a side by side. We might end up with a lot of bread that I get to go drop off at a family member's house or something if both of these turn out. I was not planning on doing this, but since I have a few minutes this morning, I might as well. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I'm going to end up with two loaves of cinnamon swirl bread. I've never made a swirl bread of any kind, so I'm really excited to experiment. That I then get to go gift to a family member, or my chickens end up getting some bread. That would probably be the worst thing, and that's not the worst thing in the world. So in here, I just added the exact same thing, one cup of water, one tablespoon of sugar, and a teaspoon of yeast. And this is the active dry, this is the instant. Okay, I'm gonna let those sit for a few minutes. And I'm gonna sit down and drink my tea. I'm a little skeptical that either of these yeasts are active. <laughs> this is my active dry and this is my instant. And they both don't seem to have very much bubble to them, but we're gonna go with it. Like I said, what's the worst thing that's gonna happen? I guess the chickens are gonna get two loaves of bread and Josh and I aren't gonna get any of them but it would be good to know if my yeast is actually working. It works just fine with my no need bread recipe, but when I made those quick rolls, they didn't, it didn't work. So I need to know if my yeast is working. 
So now what we need to do is add our dry ingredients, which is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour in each one, and a teaspoon of salt. Now we're gonna mix these together, and they do need to be kneaded for about seven minutes each. And now I'm thinking I may have put one teaspoon of yeast in here, and I'm looking at my recipe right here, and it says that it only needs a half teaspoon, and I can't remember what I did. <laughs> you probably all could tell me what I did, but I certainly can't tell myself what, I don't know what I did. So we're just gonna go with it. We're gonna go with it. It's gonna be just fine. While I'm gonna need this dough for a good seven minutes each, both of them, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna oil them, I'm gonna cover them, and I'm gonna put them in my proofing oven and let them proof for at least an hour and I want them to double in size and then we'll be able to shape them, braid them, and turn it into a nice beautiful loaf. And while that's happening, I am going to bring you back to the other day when we planted garlic. We finally got out there and I'm so glad we got out there and planted our garlic before the snow. You definitely wanna, I still pushed it a little bit late to have the garlic in the ground. But while this is rising, go enjoy planting the garlic and then come back, we'll shake this, and then we will make our cheddar broccoli soup. And I'm also gonna bake some biscuits, those frozen biscuits we made up and put in the oven. We're going to do an experiment and see how well those frozen biscuits bake up. Because I think that will be a nice thing to go with tonight's dinner. Now when Chelsea made this dough, it was so soft and supple looking. <laughs> So I really hope that this turns out well. Good morning, friends. I have about a two hour window right now where there is no rain. We have had torrential downpours for probably two weeks or so, so it's made the ability to plant garlic very difficult. So I am not really ready for the day whatsoever, but because I have this window, I need to seize the opportunity and I need to go out and plant as much garlic as I can in the only area I really have available. And I'm gonna show you where that is. It's an area we haven't been in in a long time. So what I'm doing is we separated a bunch of garlic out when we were together for the garlic peeling party. And let me show you what we're gonna be planting today. So the first thing I'm gonna really take priority on planting is elephant garlic because it's so easy to peel and it makes delicious, delicious garlic powder. So I want to plant as much of the elephant garlic as I have, so this whole box. And then in this 30 quart bowl, I'm going through and I'm picking out the largest heads of garlic because I don't have as big of a space to plant this year. And we do need to separate this garlic into cloves. So I'm just gonna break them. You can keep all the paper on, and you can see this is an elephant garlic clove versus a pretty big garlic clove that's just regular garlic, the size difference. So the variety of garlic we're planting this year is called Susanville. It is garlic that I have saved the seed. This is now the second year I'm saving my own seed to plant. And it is a soft neck variety of garlic. The benefits of a soft neck variety of garlic is the shelf life is longer, which is good because I'm trying to store garlic and grow garlic for myself for fresh eating all year long as much as possible. But the downside is you do not get a garlic scape, which is the flowering part of garlic. I did not place my order to order seed garlic in time. You need to place it really early or kind of late summer in order to get it because the best time to plant garlic is in the fall. You plant a garlic clove when it is exposed to those really cold temperatures throughout the winter and fall, something happens inside the clove that tells the garlic clove to break up into multiple cloves and that clove grows into an entire head of garlic. 
And the only difference between seed garlic and garlic you buy at the store is seed garlic is typically, if you buy it from a seed company, it's certified to not have disease on it. But you can plant store-bought garlic and grow yourself a whole head of garlic if you want to. I think that this is probably about as much garlic as I'm gonna be able to plant out there because like I said, my garden is not built yet. It's not gonna be built for a while and I don't have a very big area to plant garlic. So maybe we'll start with this amount of garlic and we'll go from there. If I need to come back in and get more, we can do that. I do wanna make sure I'm getting the biggest ones. Whatever we don't plant, we will just eat fresh. Or I'll turn it into more dried garlic or something. Now we're ready to go plant our garlic and I'm kind of nervous about it because this area I have not really been in in a long time and I really hope this is going to work for us because it's the only area I really have time in order to prep in order to get this garlic in the ground in time. I probably should have planted this garlic, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. And with the holidays coming up and just all the other stuff that's happening in our lives, I don't see us being able to find a place where we're going to be able to prep garlic, a garlic bed in time. So if this doesn't work out, then we aren't going to have a garlic harvest next year. Look at my girls. Hey girls, coming to say hi. Okay, so let's go check out this area that we are going to plant in. I haven't been out here in so long. Oh goodness, okay. So we are in the previous owner's garden and 90% of what's in this garden are strawberries and I don't want to rip any of the strawberries out, but I have two empty beds right here. Well, I take that back. This bed is not so empty. This is full of weeds. So I need to go ahead and take a minute and weed this bed. I don't know why this one is full of weeds and that one isn't, but let me go ahead and reclaim this bed. The sad thing is some of these weeds have gone to seed. Ah! So hopefully that's not a huge problem for me this next year. But like I said, this really is the only place I have available that I can put something in the ground right now. So we are going to go ahead and just do what we can. We'll do our part and then we'll let nature take care of the rest. This is a chive plant, so I'm gonna let the chives just go. I wonder if I had like a hoe or something that I could kind of use to break up the soil. We have now met with our landscaper twice going over what 2023's garden is gonna look like, where it's gonna be, and it's nowhere in this area whatsoever. This area is eventually going to turn into orchard and so I know that we're not gonna get to planting this orchard this spring or fall. So these beds that are existing from the previous owner are all eventually going to be ripped out, but we're not gonna be ripping them out anytime soon. That's why I have decided that this is the best place to go ahead and get this garlic planted. This also, it either is gonna be more orchard or it's going to be a blueberry patch. This whole area is going to turn into perennial fruit production eventually, but like I said, it's not going to be anytime soon. I say not anytime soon, but basically not <laughs> by next July because this garlic, as long as it grows for us, hopefully will be harvestable in late July or mid July. I harvested this garlic July 15th of 2022. This is why you never want to leave your soil uncovered because nature will cover it one way or the other. She does not like to be exposed to the elements and so she'll either cover it with weeds or you can cover it.
So going back to the two different types of garlic, there's the hardneck varieties, which I am not planting this year, unfortunately. I will next year probably order some hardneck varieties so that I can get the garlic scapes. I like getting garlic scapes in the spring. That is the flowering head and it has really good garlic flavor and you can actually powder it and turn it into garlic powder and it's delicious. But I just did not like the variety I planted last year and so I don't want to grow those and I didn't order any in time. Now, the one thing about hardneck varieties is typically the shelf life is not as long, but the benefit of a hardneck variety is you get the garlic scape and the cloves typically are bigger. They're, the heads are smaller because there's fewer cloves per head, but the garlic cloves themselves are typically larger, but the shelf life is not as long as a softneck variety. Typically, all the garlic you buy in the grocery store is going to be a softneck variety because the shelf life is much, much longer, and that is what typically grocery stores are looking for when it comes to garlic. So this bed is almost totally prepped here and ready for us to start planting. I'm not sure why this bed doesn't have as many weeds, but I'm just gonna take this hoe and kind of clean up any, break up any weed roots or anything, and then we can plant a little bit easier. And I'm realizing I have more space here than I thought. So I might be able to go inside and grab some more garlic cloves. Which is awesome. Last year I planted my garlic in one raised bed. It was a 16 foot by 4 foot raised bed. And I believe I put, I either put 9 or 12 garlic cloves per square foot. So, except for the elephant garlic, those are planted about every six to eight inches apart. Oh my goodness, I can feel it sprinkling, which means we need to hurry. I think I'm gonna put the elephant garlic in this bed because the soil in this bed is not as dark, it's more brown. So I don't think the soil is gonna be as rich in this bed than it is in this one, because this one is very dark. I've never added anything to this. I have no idea what the quality of soil in either of these beds. I'm just planting and doing my part and hoping nature takes care of the rest. So let's get the garlic, the elephant garlic in this bed. Now this elephant garlic, I did not purchase the seeds. This was elephant garlic that was growing wild at my property on my last house, at my last house. So this was completely free to me and I've been harvesting this for the last three years. So I'm just gonna plant them in here and hopefully they will grow for us. I think they will. When you plant your garlic, you want to make sure that you plant the root side down and the pointy side up. And you wanna get it in the ground before it gets too cold outside because you want it to start growing some roots and establishing itself before it goes completely dormant for winter. Elephant garlic is not technically garlic at all. It is in the leek family, but it has the same flavor as garlic. When you go to the grocery store and you buy the diced garlic in the refrigerated section in water, that is actually elephant garlic. It's not your traditional garlic because it has a really lovely garlic flavor. And what I've learned over this last year, especially after having that garlic peeling party, is that elephant garlic tastes when it's dehydrated just like regular garlic, and it is so much easier to peel and then slice up and dehydrate and turn into garlic powder. And my goal is to grow an entire year's worth of garlic, not just fresh garlic, but also garlic powder and all the other garlic yummy things we like to have. And instead of having to take the effort to peel so many small cloves of garlic, I thought, why don't I just go big and plant an entire bed or as many elephant garlic cloves as I have to then try to turn that into garlic powder. So that's my goal is for 90% of this elephant garlic to turn into garlic powder. And as I was planting, you can see what I'm digging up there. Those are some volunteer potatoes that the previous owner must have had some potatoes in this bed this last year. And I end up cooking those up for the Thanksgiving that we celebrate this coming weekend with Josh's family. So now I have that entire bed 
planted with elephant garlic. I'm moving on to the next bed and we're gonna plant out this entire bed with our Susanville soft neck garlic. I'm planting, I think I'm kind of, I have my seeding square, but I'm also doing it by eye. I'm planting about nine cloves of garlic per square foot. I think I planted them a little bit closer together last year, but I'm giving myself a little bit more room this year. It's starting to rain, but I have no choice but to continue to finish planting this garlic. I just went inside and got a whole nether bowl of garlic and I went through and I picked out the largest cloves again. I originally was thinking that I was not going to be able to grow another year's worth of garlic at this house just with the amount of space I had to work with, but I think we are going to be able to make this happen and I'm really encouraged by that. Because now we are at a new place and I feel like I, well I am completely starting over with gardening. I was at that previous garden for three summers, three growing seasons, and I feel like I was just starting to get like a rhythm and some confidence under my belt, thinking, okay, I mean, I have failures every year, but thinking like, okay, I'm starting to get part of this. I was getting the garlic and now moving, I feel like I'm a brand new gardener. Like I know absolutely nothing. And so you and I are kind of in this together. I feel like we're starting from scratch scratch we are starting from scratch and we just get to kind of build this whole thing from the ground up and right now we're just using what we have and i am so grateful and blessed that i have these two beds that i now can plant with garlic it's more than i thought <laughs> that i was going to be able to do this year and it's super encouraging so it is raining i need to get going and get the rest of this garlic in the ground we officially have 2023's garden started and I'm super excited about that. I am going to go buy some straw to mulch these two beds. We are back to present time and I am going to go ahead and take the garlic that we freeze dried and we are going to turn this into powder. So this is just the freeze dried garlic cloves that I have I'm putting in my blender. You could use a regular blender or a food processor. I don't want to overfill my blender because I can't get a fine powder if I overfill it. So we're going to put it in, we're going to turn the blender on and just you can blend it to as fine of a powder as you want. I kind of left a few little chunks in there and left some pretty powdery. So this is what next year I'm going to try to only use elephant garlic to make. I wish you all could smell the flavor of this. It's fantastic. So all I'm gonna do to store this powdered garlic or kind of granulated garlic, cause it's not completely turned into powder, is I'll just keep it in mason jars with a canning lid and keep it nice and closed. And it will last for a good long time. I'm hoping that I just grew enough and powdered enough to last me a year, I still have tons of fresh garlic, tons, that I could, if it's starting to show signs of going bad, I can preserve it up. But my goal is to try to use this more toward the end of the winter so that I use my fresh stuff up first and then I resort to using my preserved. But I do need to make sure I package up some of these for the people that help me peel all this garlic. It's going to be nice to have garlic powder on hand again because I haven't had any in my house in quite some time. Super happy with this harvest. So one of these is going to go on my spice shelf here. And I have to say it feels good to have garlic powder again. And then the other two are going to go down here, package up for gifts and for using later in the year. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 425, I think. I have to look at my recipe. This is for the biscuits. I've never frozen biscuits and baked biscuits from frozen, but I've seen people do it, so I think it should work. Yeah, 425. If you watched me make these, I just followed my biscuit recipe, and instead of baking them right away, I put them in a freezer bag and froze them. So we are going to attempt to bake them and see how they bake up. I don't think I'm gonna put the egg wash on them. I normally put an egg wash on my biscuits, but I'm going to just bake them like this. And I'm gonna put this back in the freezer because if this works, I'm gonna make more of these and I can just reuse this same Ziploc bag. I'm waiting on my oven to preheat. 
before I put my biscuits in. So we're gonna get going on dinner. We're gonna make cheddar broccoli soup. I've never made this before, but I have broccoli in my refrigerator and it needs to be used up. And on a snowy day, it just sounds like something that would go really well with some biscuits. So the recipe calls for some butter and one onion, but I don't feel like chopping an onion right now, so I'm just gonna use our garden fresh onions that we chopped up so that I get to save myself a step and I don't have to chop any onions today. So that prob oh, that's probably about the equivalent. Maybe I'll add a few more to an onion. And this is a mix of yellow and red just because that's what I grew and I put in this bag. I do need to chop up the broccoli, grate some carrots, and shred some cheese. So while this is cooking, our oven's preheating, we'll get on those vegetables prepped. Couldn't find my cheese grater. Sometimes when Josh unloads the dishwasher, he doesn't always put it where I would put it, so it can be a treasure hunt to find things, which is totally fine. I appreciate the help. So I have three carrots I just washed. We are going to peel these carrots and shred them up. And then I have broccoli here that we need to dice up. You could probably use frozen broccoli in this, I would assume. I just have fresh that needs to be used, so we're gonna use that. And remember, you can keep your carrot peels and you can put these in a bag in the freezer and use them when you make broth if you want. So when you're making broth, you don't have to pull out a whole carrot. You can kind of save yourself a few pennies that way. I do have to say I am a little bit worried about this yeast because I just checked on the bread and it hasn't risen at all. So I did turn the oven on low so that it can warm up just a little bit and hopefully that's gonna activate our yeast for us. So we're gonna just shred these carrots. Now we have our three carrots shredded. I'm gonna run my knife through it just a couple times just to make sure that the shreds are nice and small. Now I'm gonna take my broccoli. This is already pre-washed broccoli. And I'm gonna go through and if there's any kind of brown spots or any spots that I'm not super thrilled with, I'm just gonna cut those off. And then what I'm gonna do is cut these into way smaller pieces. I want them definitely in bite-sized pieces. We have our broccoli and our carrots all ready to go. Our oven is preheated, so let's get our biscuits in our oven. I'm just going to put these, well, just gotta move the cast iron right in the oven, and we're gonna let those bake. In the time it took us to grate our carrots and cut up our broccoli, our onions are nicely cooked. And now we need to make a roux to thicken our sauce, so I'm gonna add a little bit more butter and flour to this. My pot's getting too hot, so I'm actually gonna take it off the stove for just a second, and I'm gonna let that butter melt off the stove, just because my pan is getting a little too hot. Now we're gonna add our flour. So it's equal parts flour to butter, and this is what's gonna thicken our soup and make it nice and creamy. I'm gonna let that cook for about two minutes. We let our flour cook, so we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth. I'm not making a huge batch of soup. This is kind of more of a smaller batch. And then we're supposed to add two cups of half and half. It doesn't seem like enough broth for everything we're making, but if I need to add a little bit more, I can. And then we just cook this until that flour thickens up the broth and the milk. We haven't seasoned this at all yet, so I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. And of course, a little bit of pepper. And I wanna give this a taste test. There are more seasonings we're gonna be adding in just a minute. Mmm, that tastes good. So there are our last few spices we're gonna add to our soup. The next one we're gonna add is a little bit of garlic powder, even though I just said 
I was gonna save this. I don't feel like peeling garlic right now. <laughs> so we're gonna use our garlic powder. And then a little bit of smoked paprika. We already added our salt and pepper. The last thing is a little bit of mustard. I know I have dried mustard somewhere, but I don't feel like looking for it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of regular mustard. Now we're gonna add all of our vegetables. I think that I am gonna have to add more broth because I think I chopped up more vegetables <laughs> than the recipe calls for. Or maybe we'll just have a thicker soup. I don't know. We'll have to see how it turns out. We still have to shred all the cheese. Did I make a mess? Well, not too bad. It smells so good. I can smell the biscuits in the oven too. Yep, it looks like we need to add a little bit more broth. So I'm gonna add equal parts broth and cream just until it kind of covers the broccoli. There we go. So we're gonna let this just come up to a simmer and simmer away and let these vegetables get nice and tender. We still need to shred our cheese and we need at least two cups. If I had yellow cheddar, I would use that, but I only have white cheddar. So we're gonna use what we have. I don't think I'm gonna use all of this cheese, but because I have it open and there's not very much left, I'm gonna go ahead and shred all of it. And whatever I don't use, I can just use later in a different recipe. And it says you don't need to add the cheese until the very end. You know, I can smell those biscuits. So I think they might be done. Oh, friends, look at that. Oh my goodness. Those are from frozen. Look at the flake on that. Perfectly cooked. Turn my oven off. Oh my goodness. Those are perfect. Josh is going to be thrilled to have homemade biscuits with dinner tonight. And I'm thrilled I didn't have to do any work to have homemade biscuits. I'm gonna be making up a bunch of these so that we can have biscuits frozen in the freezer all the time. So we can always have a home cooked biscuit and not have to go through the effort of making a home cooked biscuit. That is so thrilling. Oh my goodness, friends. That is a game changer right there. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna use all of this cheese for tonight's recipe. Perfect. So I just put a little bit of cranberry sauce left over from the Thanksgiving we celebrated this weekend to do a little taste test on this biscuit. Cheers, friends. Mm-hmm. Mm. To think, we could make a bunch of those and have flaky, delicious biscuits whenever we want. That could be dangerous. That could be dangerous. All right, we have our cheese shredded. We have our soup going. Our biscuits are done. Our garlic is in the ground. It's been about an hour since we started that bread. I'm a little nervous to look at it. Oh, I sure hope it turns out. You ready to find out with me? Let's see. Oh, it's rising a little bit. Okay, it's rising a little bit, so that's good. So I'm gonna put this back in here. My oven is nice and kind of warm. This one's not rising at all. <laughs> what I'm gonna do, because I have the soup on the stove now, I'm gonna go sit down and enjoy my cup of tea. And then we will be back to cross our fingers, shape this loaf, loaves, because I have two in there. I am at a way higher elevation now than I was before. And I wonder if that, I don't know if, I know that the elevation can affect baking, but I don't know if it affects yeast at all. If you guys know anything about that, would you let me know? I haven't had any problems obviously with the biscuits or my no need bread recipe. You have seen that I get a beautiful puff and rise using the same yeast. But when I've tried to do just a yeasted bread, like those rolls, I'm not getting the rise that I want on them. So, I mean, I could just go buy some more yeast. Yeast is not expensive, but I have a lot of what I have, so I sure hope this works. I'm gonna let this sit in here for at least another hour, 
My house is cold, so that could be contributing to it. I don't know. You know what I'm gonna do before I go sit down and relax? Is we did not make very many dishes today. And I might as well, while I'm standing up, I'm in the kitchen, let's get the dishes in the dishwasher so that when we pull dinner together tonight, and we bake our loaf of bread, that we really won't have hardly anything to clean, and then we can just enjoy the evening. I don't always do this, but it does help when you're in the kitchen with me. It keeps me a little bit more accountable to try to stay on top of things. One thing I like to do too is try to keep the sink clean. So I feel like if I can keep my sink clean, then my whole kitchen just feels cleaner. Now that the kitchen is cleaned, we have just the stuff out we need to finish our bread, Lord willing, that bread rises and we're able to bake it. So cheers, I'm gonna go relax, we'll be back. All right, let's get this. It doubled, yay! Okay, now I can't remember, this is the first one we did, so this is the active, the instant yeast. This is the second one we did, which was the active dry. And it looks like it could rise a little bit more. So while we shape this first one, I'll leave this one in the oven. I think this is what we want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dough out of the bowl and we need to shape it. It says into a 12 by 15. So not super big actually. This dough feels beautiful. That's probably about a 12 by 15, I think. And then we're gonna add some butter. Now we're gonna add some brown sugar. So this is supposed to be a Nutella roll. So if you have Nutella, go ahead and put your Nutella on here instead of brown sugar, butter, and cinnamon. So we're basically making like a cinnamon roll kind of roll instead because I don't have any Nutella in my house. And this is some cinnamon I'm just sprinkling over top. Oh, it says place on oiled surface, which I did not do. So we're eventually going to have to put this bread on a baking sheet. So I'm gonna bake this on some parchment paper. And what we need to do is roll this roll up Roll tightly and place on parchment lined baking sheet or silicone lined baking sheet. Cut the dough down the middle with a knife, leaving one inch intact. Twist each end over top of each other, making sure to turn cut side upward to the top. Cover dough with plastic wrap and let sit for 20 minutes. And it says preheat the oven to 350, so let's go ahead and do that now. trying to keep this really nice and tight. This is very much outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> So I cut it down and we left one inch intact and we're gonna turn our dough upwards facing the ceiling. And we're supposed to twist All right, 
there's one. I'm going to try to do the same thing with this one. But maybe we can try to make it look a little bit nicer this time. I'm not going to roll it out quite as thin to see if we can get a better shape on our dough. Okay, let me go wash my hands. I'm not putting a ton of butter on here, maybe just a couple tablespoons. I don't want to put a ton of sugar either. So that was maybe a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. And I have no idea how much cinnamon I'm adding. Just enough. Okay, I like rolling it away from me better. This one I rolled toward me, and I feel like I have a lot more control over this dough. And I like that I didn't roll it out quite as thin. The one thing the recipe doesn't say is it doesn't say where you should have the seam, whether that seam should be up, probably, because we have to cut it anyway. So we might as well cut along that seam line, I would think. That is just me speculating. I do feel better after doing one of these. They do tend to stretch out on you. So now we're gonna cut this one. So you're wanting to try to keep the cuts facing up, and that's kind of difficult to do. After getting them nice and twisted, I kind of squooshed them up together so that they would be a little bit more compact. I covered them with some plastic wrap and we're gonna let them rise for 20 minutes while the oven preheats. So surprisingly, I think both of those doughs rose no problem. I don't think I have a problem with my yeast, which I'm grateful for. So we just covered that with saran wrap and now we let that sit for a good 20 minutes and proof for a second time it said, which will give us plenty of time to clean up the rest of our mess here. I definitely did not need that much butter. Try to make sure we clean as we go. The last thing that we need to do to this bread after it rises for 20 minutes is put an egg wash on it. So I'm gonna grab an egg out of the fridge. I'll just get this ready so that when it's time to put the egg wash on. We'll already have it nice and ready to go. I walked away while I was supposed to let this rest for 20 minutes and the butter and sugar seems to have oozed out of our bread. So what I think I'm gonna do, I have a feeling that could burn. So I am gonna take a paper towel and kind of clean that up. I am no professional bread baker, but I would like to get better and experimenting is you know, really the only way that that's gonna happen, or not necessarily experimenting, but practicing, trying new things. Just like our biscuits came out perfectly, we know we can freeze those and bake them up. That's how we're gonna get better, it's just by practicing. So I'm gonna soak up, oh, I don't know, maybe I should have just thrown these right in the oven. I'm not sure why they did this, but it's okay. We're just gonna go with it, adapt and overcome. Maybe I shouldn't have wiped up all that sugar. I have no idea. You can let me know what you would have done in that situation. So we are supposed to put an egg wash on here. That's what I'm gonna do now. Now this is a very odd recipe in the fact that it says to put your bread in the oven at 350 degrees and then turn the oven up to 425. Now I've come to the conclusion that this oven runs hot. So I'm gonna turn this oven up to 400. I've never seen a recipe that says put it in colder and then raise the temperature. Quite often you start when you're baking at a higher temperature, you put your thing in the oven and you bring it down in temperature. So this is a unique recipe that I have never experienced in the fact that you start lower and you increase. So because I think my oven runs hot, I don't want to increase it all the way up to that high, high temperature. So now we're going to let this bake. It says for 20 minutes and then, okay, I just did that wrong. Turn that off. Okay. We bake the bread. It says preheat oven to 350. Brush the surface of the bread lightly with an egg wash. Bake bread for 20 minutes. 
raise temperature after 20 minutes to 425 degrees and bake until lightly browned on the top for about five to seven more minutes and remove and allow bread to cool. Okay, so we're gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. And then while the timer, or while the bread's baking, we can go ahead and finish our soup because our soup is not even done yet. I do wanna give this a taste test. It doesn't have any cheese in it yet, which I know will eventually change the flavor, but we wanna make sure that this part at least tastes really good. All right, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's a little bit bland. There's not much flavor going on there. I can taste the broccoli, I can taste the cream, but we definitely need some more flavors going on. So I'm gonna add a couple pinches of salt. That will help a lot. Then I'm gonna add some more black pepper. It definitely, I feel like cheddar broccoli can handle a lot of black pepper. Mix that together. Let's add some onion powder. I bought this onion powder and it clumps up and I really don't like it. I definitely am more of a fan of onion and garlic granules as opposed to the powder. So we're gonna add, I probably added about a tablespoon of that. I'm gonna let that dissolve. Let's add a pinch of red pepper flakes. And let's add a little bit more of our garlic. So this definitely needed a boost in flavor. All right, I'm gonna let this cook and kind of come up to temperature, simmer for a minute or two, and then we'll let these flavors all kind of marry and meld, and then we'll give it a taste test again. I'm so bummed. I'm over here thinking Josh is gonna be here in any minute now and it's daylight savings yesterday. So I have probably another hour before Josh is gonna be home. <laughs> so that is kind of a bummer. So I just changed my oven clocks, so now those are the correct time. That's why I was thinking it was an hour later than it is, because I was looking at my oven clocks and I hadn't changed the time yet, but I had changed, obviously, the time changes automatically on my phone. So when I looked down on my phone, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> He won't be home for a while. Okay, we're gonna give this a taste test now. Oh yeah, that's way better. Mm -hmm. That onion powder really pairs well with the garlic, or not the, the onion powder pairs really well with the broccoli. I think that's a good play on that. Let's go ahead. I don't wanna add the cheese until closer to when Josh is gonna be here. So I think I'm gonna turn this off again and I'm just gonna let this sit while we wait for Josh to come home. We are right at 20 minutes. And my nose is what brought me over here because that smells divine. Okay, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna turn the oven up. That makes me way too worried that that bread is not gonna be cooked all the way through and it's gonna get too brown. So we're just gonna let it cook for another few minutes. I got a little piece. We started off this day with some tea and we might just end up with this day with some tea. I just turned on my kettle again. I have been addicted to tea. I cannot get enough lately. Look what could not go better with a nice cup of tea than a beautiful cinnamon braided bread. That is pretty stunning if I do say so myself. That's awesome. I just transferred the bread onto a separate sheet because this one, I was worried that the caramel, the butter and sugar and everything was gonna, it was gonna end up sticking to the bread too much. So I transferred it over here and we'll let it cool over here. I think what I'm gonna do, because Josh still won't be home for quite some time, is I'm gonna go drop off this bread to a couple family members while it's still hot, but I have to figure out a way that I want to transport it. I've got two people that live relatively close to me that I could go there and come back while we have our soup simmering on the stove. I'm gonna cut a piece off for me to taste. 
just to make sure it's good before I drop it off at someone's house. And you hear that little bit of crunch? That's from that bottom part that's caramelized on the bottom. I'm gonna go drop this off. We'll be back to finish the soup. Friends, that bread is so good. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and go make yourself that bread. I just got back from dropping it off at two different family members' houses, and I may have eaten <laughs> quite a bit of it on the way. Oh man, it was so good. So I'm glad that I gave most of it away. I saved a big chunk for Josh to eat tonight because we did not need to eat two loaves of that. So I probably am putting, that's probably three cups of cheese in here. The recipe calls for two. But I did double the broth and the cream and the broccoli. So we are almost doubling this recipe. Let me show you what I say for Josh. So he will still get to enjoy this big chunk of bread, but that is more than enough for us to keep around here. Okay, so now that we have the cheddar in here, we're gonna let this melt. It's gonna take just a minute to melt all the way. And then we're gonna taste this. I normally, or I always buy white cheddar. But I do feel like if I knew that I was gonna make this recipe, I would like to have yellow cheddar just because that's more traditional with broccoli cheddar soup. I will link all of these recipes that we cooked together. The biscuits, the cinnamon bread, the broccoli cheddar soup. I definitely added more seasonings than the recipe that I found <laughs> called for. I felt like it needed it. I did use homemade broth, which sometimes isn't as strong of a seasoned uh, broth than if you use store-bought broth or bouillon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just love broccoli and cheese together. It's so good. And then with these biscuits. So I have the dishwasher going. I have the kitchen clean. It was a wonderful snowy day experimenting in the kitchen. We've got soup, I've got hot tea, we have biscuits, and life cannot get any better. So what I'm gonna do now is go relax and I just wanna say a huge thank you for taking time out of your day to spend time with me. I don't know when Josh is gonna be home, so we are gonna end it here. If you enjoyed this video, I will pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. I'm excited for what this week holds. We are gonna be doing a huge Friendsgiving. We need to do some baby prep. We are actually having a couple house things happen this week so that we can actually set up the baby's room, which is really good because we don't have very much time left, <laughs> like two to three weeks-ish. So I'm starting to feel that crunch time just a little bit. So if you're interested in that and you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I just want to say thank you for being here and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.